I wanted to do a video where I explain the terminology behind certain things to do with gas masks and respirators. So the primary one is what's the difference between a gas mask and a respirator? And that's sort of a bit of a false thing. A gas mask in many ways is almost like a slang term for respirators. So there are several different types of respirators though and gas masks fit into a particular band of them. So your common gas mask is what is known as an air purifying respirator, as in air goes through a filter and it's purified as it goes into the respirator itself, the respirator being the actual mask. Obviously because these are primarily built to protect users from inhaling gas or vapours, that's where they got the name gas mask and I've been trying to find out the origins of them being called gas masks. They were certainly called gas masks in World War One, but the term seems to have gone back earlier than that to do with miners dealing with gas in tunnels. But there seems to be lots of sort of different things where the word came in and about, but gas masks is a term that normally sticks. It's the term I like using the most when referring to these type of masks, because it's very different than all the other kind of respirator terminologies. But for the most part, um, an air purifying respirator is something with a filter that you would breathe through and the filter adsorbs and traps harmful elements to let clean air through. Now the problem with one of these is it can't provide you with actual oxygen. If you're in an environment where there's no oxygen it can't give you any. And there's some things even most advanced filters can't block. So you can't use a gas mask or an air purifying respirator somewhere where there's no actual oxygen or very high build-ups of very harmful chemicals because some fil all filters can't stop certain chemicals and they can't provide you with oxygen. So that's when you have something called an air providing respirator or an air supplying respirator and the easiest way of thinking of that is what fire crews might wear and you can pretty much convert and convert any sort of gas mask into or air purifying respirator into an air supplying respirator simply if you took the filter off of one had a 40 mm hose for a NATO mask that connected to an oxygen tank with a 40 mm connector you'd then t uh, turn that into an air providing respirator or air supplying respirator because that oxygen is coming out of the tank into the mask now there's something that makes an air supplying respirator much safer for use well several things than um, an air purifying respirator because if you have one of these on your head and you had the filter on, let's say their filter can provide you complete protection against whatever harmful things are in the air. When you use a mask normally it works on negative pressure, that's why you can do a pressure check by you know, blocking the air supply. The problem is with negative pressure is when you have the mask on your face, inevitably as you move around you might have little gaps develop. Obviously you want to have a mask that fits your face as well as possible and industry and military safety standards have really gone up over the years with how they measure your face to get you a mask that fits you pretty much perfectly whereas before it, the logic was we give you a mask, do up the straps until it makes a good fit. That logic still works but the idea is you want the least amount of movement possible so it doesn't open up to let gaps through but they probably will and if you have an air supplying respirator they work on a system called positive pressure not negative pressure so the difference of positive pressure is as the oxygen goes into the mask, the oxygen going in from the sort of supply tank is basically pushing air around the outside of the mask at all times and out the exhale valve at all times. And what that does is it means that gas can't get in if there's a breach because the pressure inside is greater than the pressure outside so the air rushes out of the mask, not the other way around. So it's a much better system because you're breathing you're not having to you know, put a lot of effort to breathe in through a filter so the air doesn't follow the path of least resistance because it's coming straight in through a tube which is a really good system. Now speaking of air following the path of least resistance that's another issue with lots of smaller masks such as the little you know, dust masks. Little dust masks aren't very good as I've said before that's why I have that 3M half face mask I like because the little paper dust masks, you know, the ones that just do that over your mouth and nose, there's a lot of gaps around the outside of them, and that means if you're breathing through them, air following a path of least resistance often will go around the mask and not through the filter of the mask itself. So you're going to be breathing contaminated air with those, especially when there's a lot of pollutants around, so they're not very good masks. So you also have self-contained breathing apparatus, and I'm not exactly sure where they fit in because there seems to be conflicting stuff. 
but a self-contained breathing apparatus is a bit what a diver might use or somebody in an environment with no oxygen. Basically it recycles the air you're breathing, when you exhale it goes through a scrubber unit which then takes the carbon monoxide out and lets you carry on breathing. Over time carbon monoxide and things can, or carbon dioxide can build up I should say in the mask and that makes them not very safe. There's lots of Basically with self-contained breathing apparatus, I'm not an expert on them so I won't pretend to be, but from what I understand they can be very dangerous because you can black out while wearing them and suffocate when the carbon dioxide levels get too high but you're not actually aware that you're breathing carbon dioxide or at least the oxygen's going down. So what happens is you end up sort of falling unconscious or losing your strength and then you can't take the mask off and you suffocate. So that's the issue with those. With um, an air supplied respirator, I'm sure you'd actually kind of be aware or you could look at a gauge when the oxygen's running low in the tank. Obviously another thing with an air providing respirator or supplying respirator set up is that you can use them in a zero oxygen environment again, such as using um, an underwater sort of oxygen tank for a scuba diver, because that oxygen tank is actually going to be supplying you with oxygen, even if there's none down there. So, obviously... In, if you're in some sort of really nasty environment, and I'm pretty sure from what I've read on Wikipedia now, if you're in a workplace where there's really dangerous gases that could cause immediate death or long-term health effects, you're meant to be um, provided with always an air supplying respirator or a self-contained breathing apparatus. The reason being that because it's providing you with oxygen, it's always creating a positive pressure, so if the mask slips slightly from around your face, you're always going to... Um, be inhaling clean air and it's going to be forcing with pressure the dirty air out. Um, so respirators like this, um, self-contained, self sorry I'm getting slipping up on words now, air purifying respirators as in the classic gas masks, the reason these are sort of popular is just because of how lightweight they are because a filter and that is much less weight than a big rebreather setup or a big oxygen tank setup. So this is the problem I've explained before with these, is that when you test them, even if the filter works and the mask should make a good fit to your face, often looking in a certain way, moving your head creates a leak, and apparently that is a big known problem in industries, and because of safety standards, masks like this often aren't issued where as they used to be. Apparently first it was the paper masks they realised weren't very good, and it's gone on since there where they've realised that even if a proper fit test is carried out in a lab, the results may be very different when you're actually wearing a mask and doing stuff with it than, you know, in a controlled environment. So just to sort of demonstrate that, if I tighten this mask up, so the negative pressure test says this fits my face fine, however if I'm looking around like that and I had a very strong smelling chemical it'd probably be getting in where little gaps form in the mask over time. So that's why obviously if I had an oxygen tank and it was constantly blowing air into the mask it would actually be a much better setup. But for the most part a mask like this is fine if you're only going to be coming into contact with something that's dangerous over time of breathing it in. Because you're still probably filtering always 99% plus of the stuff out. So there you go, that's the difference between a gas mask and a respirator, and a bit of the difference between the various types of respirators when you start going more technically into it.